everybody. Welcome to a taste off. We're going to be tasting these fine cash strength weeded bourbons that you see before me. And I'm going to taste them blind. The winner of this tasting is going to t go up against the William LaRue Weller Buffalo Trace Antique Collection from 2019. Now, this is very highly sought after. Everybody wants it. And these are bourbons that are nice, but, you know, let's face it, they're not commanding the same demand as uh, anything from uh, BTAC. So, tonight is all about seeing if these weeded bourbon cash drinks can hold up in a flight uh, against one another. Now, it's worth pointing out that yes, there are other weeded bourbons that are at cast strength. However, this is what I happen to have. And I wanted to have something that had a lot of variation in it. Well, you know what? We have two Texas bourbons up here. Garrison Brothers. I have a 2015 Cowboy Bourbon and then TX Bourbon, which is, um, which is from late 2019. So lots of great things ahead in Texas. Now, we have a little bit of a different setup tonight. I'm on a new computer uh, and couldn't quite get the microphone situation settled. So we're actually going with computer audio. First time that I have actually done that. So now let's talk about each one of these products and kind of what they bring to the table. Weller Foolproof, which Weller, as everybody knows, is the same recipe as Pappy Van Winkle. It has uh, grown to this incredible, incredible, um, it's gotten a cult following just because of its association with the, the Weeded Bourbon family and Pappy Van Winkle. Now the history of it is actually quite a bit deeper in that this is the bourbon that one of the bourbons that the Pappy Van Winkle actually focused on. And it's actually the bourbon that really gives the term we you know brings weeded bourbon to the forefront the other bourbon that might you would say would do that would be maker's mark now these two these two products in the 60s and 70s and a little bit even before that they actually had campaigns completely surrounding around the fact that they used wheat as their secondary grain instead of rye now, at the time when uh, Weller was saying that they had a whisper of wheat, it was not actually a very common thing. And, you know, the consumer base was just like, yeah, whatever, it's bourbon. But the Stitz of Weller believed that marketing itself as using wheat separated itself from uh, the pack. Uh, Maker's Mark did the, did the same thing. They would actually say that that was the reason why that they were softer and smoother in the marketplace. But it wasn't until the 1990s that we start hearing the term weeded bourbon. Now, no one really knows who coined that phrase, and it was almost surely used in the 60s and 70s when people were going around and marketing this stuff. But it wasn't until Gary Reagan's book, uh, The Book of Bourbon, you know, he passed away last year. I do highly recommend you go check that book out. It was one of the first real kind of major, you know, undertakings of bourbon. And that hits the market in the 1990s. But he uses the term weeded bourbon in that book. Now, from a brand perspective, it wasn't until Heaven Hill purchased Old Fitzgerald from United Distillers that a company actually used that term weeded bourbon in their marketing. However, we still don't know who came up with the term weeder. So tell me which term you like better, weeder or weeded bourbon because I have found that people hate one or the other. Kind of a fascinating uh, little thing, you know, going on there. So that is a little bit about those two products. Now Garrison Brothers comes on to the scene in the, in the mid 2000s, and they really start, you know, getting a lot of attention. They're in high Texas. They have, they're using um, uh, white corn. They're using Texas wheat and wheat it grows really really well in texas oklahoma and kansas so that whole little area uh wheat does well there so there they have great access to good wheat and they start making wheat and bourbon and really 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 uh catch a lot of attention now jim murray actually has given 
has given the Garrison Brothers a lot of high marks. In my career, um, I've been, I'd probably say, a little bit more... Um, I think I've probably been quite a bit more critical of Garrison Brothers over the years. In particular, usually over, um, you know, not necessarily the flavor profile, but sometimes the pricing. And I think I've pulled, my, I've pulled back from that thought, um, you know, that they were overpriced because, you know what, I'm not the one who has to pay the bills on those distilleries and, um, and the warehouses and all that. And the fact is, distilleries are expensive and you cannot, uh, you cannot pay for those things if you cannot make a profit off of your product. So I have, I have since given up that whole talking about pricing and, and the craft distilling business and look at it as like, you know what? I realize that I'm gonna pay more for a, uh, uh, some handcrafted soap than I am from, you know, lavender queen, Irish, I don't, I don't even know soap brands, palm olive. I don't think you, you don't wash with palm olive. That's like a dish soap. Anyway, we actually, we buy, we buy specialty soaps from a lady, so I'm going down the wrong path here. Uh, basically, Garrison Brothers is a very, very, very highly sought after uh, Texas bourbon. And I know for a fact that it does well in blind competitions because it has some very nice nuances, like after you taste a lot of those uh, flavors. And let's see, we got the Larceny, uh, the Larceny uh, Castring. Now, this is their latest edition. I did not care for the first edition that came out earlier this year, the A120. This is the B520. And this is, this is one that I actually really, really liked. I'm a big fan of uh, what I tasted there. I think it's got a good shot tonight because it kind of hit a lot of the marks on my palate. Now this is a bourbon from Wyoming. This is the uh, Wyoming uh, barrel strength bourbon whiskey. They use a wheat of bourbon. This uh, recipe uh, was created by Steve Nally. And you know, Steve Nally was the former master distiller for uh, Maker's Mark and now with Bardstown Bourbon Company. And yeah, so this is actually my very first time to taste this bottle. So I have not had this whiskey before outside of a blind competition. Then we have the TX Bourbon. Now TX Bourbon, I tasted this from a What's in the Box episode earlier uh, this year and it just, it really blew my mind how good it was. Now I, it was actually on the kind of like a little bit on the outside looking in for my, my whis best whiskeys of the, my best whiskeys of the year so far. That's how highly, how high I, uh, I thought of this one is that it was almost on that list, but in the end it did did not make it. So maybe tonight it gets back into consideration, which anything's possible. Okay, so make sure you guys are hitting that uh, subscribe button while we're going, and if you want to see like what the what the winner, how the winner fares uh, up against the the William Larue Weller. That's gonna be happening in the members only channel on YouTube, specifically at the Singling membership. So no one's ever asked me about what is the Singling. Singling is the term that they use for new make in Ireland in like the, between like the 1600s and 1800s. Singling actually used to be the term that they used in the federal government as well uh, for, for new make. At some point, singling goes away as a term but i'm trying to bring it back and it is the highest tier of a uh, membership that i have on my youtube channel and i want to address something real quick before before we get into this um i i, I have mentioned this previously but i lost 100 percent of my live events events this year and I miss people. I miss being around people. And th these live tastings, these opportunities to, to share a dram with you, to have some education, um, to do what I love, which is preach the bourbon gospel and talk about the history of it, talk about what I like about something and teach people how to taste. Man, that's, this, is, this is everything to me. 
And so the fact that you all are here, the fact that you're here sharing a dram with me, it means the world. So thank you all so much. I know we are going to get through this, and I know that when we're on that other side, we're going to be in a bar, and we're going to be able to toast. And maybe we have a mask on, and, you know, we have to do that. I mean, I don't know, but I cannot wait to be around other humans uh, again and, and taste. So I've got so many cool things that are coming ahead. I just signed on with a, uh, a company that does uh, live concerts, virtual live concerts right now. They asked me to come on and do like uh, private tastings and things. So I will have an option here pretty soon where you can, you know, book me like you would at Bourbon and Beyond uh, or something like that. So I can't wait. And so you all keep those comments coming. I'm going to try and I'll try and, and flag them as I, as I as I'm coming along here. But uh, we've got a lot of things to taste. Um, ooh, that is a... Ooh, Bob. Bob, Bob uh, Menadio. I hope I said that right. My pricing formula is $10 of year per aging times proof divided by 100 equals cost. That's a lot of math right there. That is a lot of math. And again, if you are a member over on the YouTube channel, you won't be able to see this over... You won't be able to see this in uh, Periscope or, or uh, Twitch uh, or Facebook, but you have a lot of uh, custom emojis in uh, in the, U in the if you're a member on the YouTube side. Uh, vodka sucks is a very popular one, and Greg Bradshaw I think might be the king of the vodka sucks. So if let's see if we have any questions here. Now this is a new setup for me and uh, the screens are a little bit different so it won't be as reactive as i normally am but i actually feel really good right about uh right about now and i am excited excited to get into this so here we go okay so glass number one. Oh, i forgot to say this this is where the um, this is what we know what we're tasting here and again if you're just joining us uh, the lineup is right in front of you right here basically we are tasting uh, cast drink weeded bourbons and the winner will go on to taste this guy the William LaRue Weller so these are these are all bourbons uh, that are weeded bourbons and are cast drink and I'm tasting them blind. Uh, my wife actually poured these out for me. So here we go. So this is uh, glass number one. I'm going to go ahead, move one over here. Okay, so glass number one is coming in like a, a smell some grain, uh, like grain, like you're, you're like milling flour. And after a little bit of grain, just a hint, just a hint of oak. Really, um, I really like this flavor. Uh, that this is definitely, definitely sweet, but sweet in like, um, like a grain part. Um, big fan of what this tastes like. Big fan. So, first, it's uh, it comes on the nose. It comes on the nose as being very. Um, you know, it's sweet, and then some like grains, uh, and then some oak, like a like a nice a nice refreshing smell of oak, not too much oak, and then on the flavor, that oak is there, just a touch of smoke, and uh, a really like like a candy corn, you know, like that nice sweet and kind of like chewy kind of you know. Uh, Really like that. Now, uh, Douglas Pendleton brings up uh, the sweet oak. And yes, this would be the sweet oak. This is what my good friend Kenny Coleman 
a bourbon pursuit would refer to as uh, sweet oak. It's a uh, it's a flavor note. All right, so one. I'm not gonna say one's gonna be tough to beat, but one. One is what I really want to drink. Like I mean, I wanna I wanna go to a football game, and and sip on that. I really enjoy that. Okay, so two. Two's a much different, um, it's a much, diff much, much different approach. This is like hints of like sandalwood. Um, hmm. Honey. Hey, Adam Sanchez, thanks for joining. Really appreciate you coming and sharing a dram with me tonight. We're tasting uh, weeded cash drink bourbons and blind tasting them. These are two are from Texas. One is from Wyoming, and uh, the other two are from Kentucky. Or the other three are from Kentucky. So it's a very unique lineup. And the winner of tonight will go on to take the uh, take on the William Lou Willer. Always good to see Brendan Hogan in the chat. Okay. Um, sandalwood, um, like some orange peel. And then... Um, This is, this is I can't quite I can't quite describe this this other note I'm getting. Okay. Um. So that's interesting. Wow. That's like um, cinnamon bread. Mm. Interesting. Huh. Let's come back to that one later. Okay, so I'm going to go into number three. Um, first of all, I think there's a misnomer with weeded bourbons that they all tend to be, you know, follow the same pattern. Now, traditionally, weeded bourbons kind of follow a lower lower barrel entry proof uh, formula. Not all of these do. In fact, uh, like uh, Weller's going in the barrel at 114 proof. Uh, Larceny is at 125 proof going into the barrel, and uh, Maker's Mark is going into the barrel at 110 as is uh, uh, the Texas bourbon. I don't know off the top of my head what the barrel entry proofs of Wyoming and Garrison Brothers are. So if you know that, please feel free to put it in the chat. So we're going to number three now. I don't know if you all caught that when I was uh, in the beginning pouring. Uh, But uh, I poured the wrong one in here, so I had to change up the number. Uh, the Bull Bourbon Bavardier uh, wants to know the cast strength. I guess I could take this as a moment to tell everybody the cast strength on all these. Okay, so the uh, Wyoming whiskey uh, strength is 126 proof. Okay, so that's packing some heat. The uh, Maker's Mark is 108.8 .8 proof. Again, going in the barrel at 110 proof. Uh, the TX Bourbon is 127 proof. The Cowboy Bourbon is 
not seeing the proof on here. Ah, a uh, hundred and twenty-five proof. The larceny, one hundred twenty-two point two proof. And the Weller full proof, one hundred and fourteen proof. And Nathan asks, uh, Nathan Lawless asks. Uh, what year is the Cowboy uh, Garrison Brothers? Uh, that is 2015. So, to number three. Interesting. I tell you what, the uh, number two and number three at first uh, smelled very similar in my memory of what two was, and then I went back and did a side by side, and, and they were you know very different. Um, this number three has a hint of sandalwood as well. Uh, it also has hints of of a leather. and sweet feed like uh, you open up a bag of sweet feed um, that you you know if you have horses you know what i'm talking about it's 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 molasses it's oats and all that and it's a particular aroma when you just open that bag up and it just goes Phew. you can really smell that oh Oh man. <laughs> Woo. Man. I'll get right on that guys. I'll fix the chair. <sighs> I'm sorry, were we talking about something? Because I was just... Mm, 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 mm. I was just all up in it. Damn. You know, it happens every now and then. You, you see something, you, you, you do something, it just kind of takes your breath away and it puts you in a moment and you're like, damn, mm, I want more of that. And I think we have our first bet of the night. Uh, I don't think you can actually bet on this sort of thing. Um, but, okay. So that was number three. Let's go to number four. All right, so number four is a um, little cake battery kind of uh, confectionery room. Um, nothing really wowing me. It's just kind of there, you know. It just there's a couple hints of perfumey and then some sweet. Grain forward. Um, lots of. Um, Lots of cornbread notes. Uh, very, 
very nice but I mean I mean after after tasting three I'll have to come back to that one Bourbon Bravadier, bur the Bourbon Bravadier, Bravadier. Um, all I can say is when I tried Wyoming Whiskey Barrel Strength, that was about my reaction. Ha ha. There we go. And he's uh, my kind of, he knows what's up. At home dad is thinking that uh, number three is Wyoming. I'll be darned. I like this, guys. I like you all doing this. All right, so we're going to go to five now. So, five is, um, hmm, five's a little earthy. You know, this is um, this is earthy. It's it's sweet in a way that a um, a nice oatmeal stout is sweet. You know, it has a lot of beer characteristics for me. So I like that. Um, I think it's just going to be hard for five to stand out. You know, after you know three, just kind of. Man. Okay, so now we're going to six. Oh, Frank asks a very good question. Uh, Frank uh, Gasolum asked, uh, is there such a thing as a high malt bourbon? Uh, absolutely, uh, there are high malt bourbons. Um, you know, uh, Rabbit Hole is is kind of on like a, on a mission to be probably something that is probably thought to be the, the best of the high malts. It's, it's not really that common because malt was almost always used traditionally as just a way to get enact fermentation, you know, to get stuff going. Um, but um, you know, it, 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 a lot of the old school bourbon distillers would say that there is no, there is no flavor um, in it. But so uh, Andrew asked, well, what about Woodford malt? But that's actually not a bourbon; that's a malt whiskey, and so a diff different category, different category. So. A little bit of whiskey cross over there. All right, so six is uh, is like uh, peanuts, like roasted peanuts, uh, honey, pepper. I mean, it's an attractive nose. Oh. Ooh. Hey. Mm. First of all, there wasn't a bad whiskey in this bunch. These were all very good. You know, some, I mean, they're, but they're very different. Um.
I think six might be a contender. The way the viscosity on it, it hits my it hits my palate, and then kind of like goes goes to the jawline and walks itself up and kind of like is on the roof of my mouth, almost like um, almost like a popcorn oil would after you've chewed it around a little bit, and that oil just kind of sticks up there. Yeah. I like six. I like six. Six has six has potential. So one of the one of the things about doing a blind tasting is uh, so Tim Evans asked, you know, you have to know what these are. And and, and you know what? I mean, maybe if I wanted to dial in and figure out what these whiskeys were, maybe I could. Maybe I could. But if you're focusing on what something is instead of analyzing it, analyzing the glass for um, how long it's on the fin or how long it's on the palate, uh, where it's hitting the palate, if you're not focusing on those things, you know, then you're doing a disservice to like an actual analytical comparison. Because I'm instead of like saying like oh, I'm breaking this down of like is that is that a malt or is that a um, or is that like a an element, or, or or is that a caramel? You know, then what I'm doing is I'm focusing on oh that that's got to be larceny because it's got a peanut note in there. Um, you know, I can't do that because I mean some people might be able to, I can't. I my brain works in a very different way, so I have to do. Um, San Luis is the new marzipan. I, I don't even know what that. Jim Eaton over here is uh, giving me, uh, is cracking me up. You mean sandalwood? I mean, I brought up sandalwood a couple times. That's funny. But you know what? San Luis, that, um, that sounds, I like that. Maybe like a barrel pick name. I like me some San Luis. Okay, so now we have to get down to all right, so we know that number three is a clear love of mine. I really love number one, and I'm finding six to be the kind of thing that I want to learn more about. So I need to I need to like jump into two, four, and five to figure out you know where 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 they kind of sit. Two is just that after tasting everything, uh, the oak is really predominant. And I just got a little hint of plastic in there. Just a just a hint of plastic. I'm not I'm not in love with two. Okay, four. Look, coming back into four, like some of my original thoughts of it being um, being bready, being cake battery, kind of holding true. Four might just jump into this over here. Four's got just a just enough of an edge there. I like its mouthfeel. I like how it kind of like dissolves on the palate like cotton candy would. Uh, it's got some sweetness to it as well as um, a really nice savory note like a like a sourdough bread. So four has a lot of qualities there I like. So let's go to five. Ah, Bluegrass Voyager wants to know what plastic tastes like. Well, go lick some plastic and you'll find out.
Mm. Yeah, I like five. So the only one I'm knocking out of contention right now is two. So I'll, actually, I'll put, so this will be, so two. Two is the, uh, two I find to be really approachable, really nice. I'm gonna hit uh, hit back up with three. See what it's up to. Mm. Oh man. Mm. Three is just lovely. Just lovely. I can't get over that. So three is definitely going to go into the front. Coming back to one. Hmm. This is going to be a really nice showdown between three and one. Let's take a look at six one more time. Six is a wild card. This is a um, this is a real wild card because I am I am really digging. I'm really digging the um, the kind of sp the spice to it, and the way it it just moves around the palate. It is really, really unique. So five. Five is going to go in uh, fifth place. Four and six really are saying, like, um, don't count us out yet. I have to tell you that these four bourbons, these four weeded bourbons at Cash Shrink, I would pick them on any given day. So I'm really going to have to dial it in and figure out which one I like the most because I'm really, what I'm basically seeing here is I'm basically seeing um, an incredible amount of flavor all over the range for, for, for many of them. But it's got a, each one of these has their own story. They have their own unique, you know, flavor concept. And um, man, six is out there, okay? So six is the one that, if you are in in the mood for a, a spice and for like a, a palate jumper where it kind of dissolves on the front of your palate and then jumps the up and kind of like jump goes all around uh, three is all encompassing it's touching every inch of your palate and uh, just caressing you all the way down one is a flavor bomb. I mean, there's so many beautiful notes there. And then four, my God.
Mm. All right, so I'm going to have to re-pour here. They're all very different. I like them all. And I do, I really do believe it's a dead heat going into this. Uh, it was quite a bit easier to uh, coal those two. I think of what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with uh, one and six because they're different. One feels like a more traditional bourbon to me. It's more, it has quite a bit more, um, it has quite a bit more you know, caramelly, basic sweet notes, pie crust, that sort of thing. Whereas six comes in. And says, oh my God. Oh. Six has a kind of spice that just tickles all the way down. Mm. Oh man. I'm out of water. Okay. Four will be going into uh, fourth place. Very nice, but doesn't stand up uh, to these at all. One is going into third place. Oh, yeah. I don't want to pick. I do not want to pick. These two bourbons are exceptional. They are different. It's like, it's like you have, um, you know, you have like a, you had, this is this is Jerome Bettis. Number six is Jerome Bettis. Uh, we'll run you over. We'll catch a pass out of the backfield. We'll block. This is um, this is this is Thurman Thomas. You know, number three. It's Thurman Thomas can do anything. Uh, great runner. But so you basically have. Two great running backs, not greatest of all time running backs, but two great running backs, Jerome Bettis versus Thurman Thomas. Who are you picking? That's the dilemma I have right now. Very different styles. Very different styles. I have to do a re pour. Six. three now a reminder that whichever one wins this uh, will be going to the uh, will in the members only channel at the singling singling membership will be tasting off against the Weller from uh, 2019 Okay. Now what I'm doing with the nose, I'm trying to find that one flavor that, that jumps out. 
Here I know it's uh, sweetness. So this is like going toward the sweet side. I mean, every time I smell it, I get more and more, uh, more out of it. Okay, so three wins on the nose, okay? So three wins on the nose. It is more elegant. It has more of the, the flavors I want to smell. Uh, six, again, when I've smelled that, every single time I smell that, it's just not wowing me. Uh, so from an aromatic property, if we're just judging by something that I'm going to smell, then it's three all day long. But of course, we don't just smell whiskey, right? We sip it. Oh, yeah. chair is loud. Threw me off my thought. Hmm. Okay, so now I'm assessing the most dominant flavor and all the points that it hits on my tongue. And the most dominant flavor is caramel. Look, you see caramel in a lot of bourbon reviews because it's a very predominant note. And you shouldn't be shy away from saying that you taste caramel when you taste caramel. You know, you don't always have to be unique and say like, well, it's the, uh, it's the caramel. Or you, you just, if you just taste caramel, just say caramel. But this has a like different types of caramel, you know? So caramel can be chewy, it can be salty, um, it can be crunchy. And this is like, this runs the gambit. But this would be your quintessential caramel bomb so from a flavor perspective, I am really, really uh, getting into this one. Now, um, East Medley says, uh, share your memory uh, with that taste, Fred. Um, so, you know, this particular, um, he obviously watches, and I always talk about mindfulness, about how connecting your, your memories and the things you've tasted in your past uh, with something that's in your glass, your glass right here and there, and um, um, this this really, you know, it reminds it reminds me it reminds me of um, like a like a caramel chew like my my dad would give me, um, you know, it, it, it pretty pretty simple, a really nice caramel chew. So to number six we go. So this one, this one has a, six has a, six has a great deal of spice to it, okay? So we're, we're talking baking spices, but not, you know, kind of like the Jamaican jerk chicken type. Uh, clove, uh, cardamom. So these are not necessarily, uh, you know, the spices that you would necessarily associate with the baking spices, but cinnamon comes in very nicely. And then after those baking spices, there's a big old fat vanilla, like like a like a like a vanilla pudding, like soft, creamy, just vanilla. But what I what I continue to go back to this thing um, is the is the way it hits the top of my palate like it tingles it literally tingles the top of my palate which is so enjoyable to me i love that tingle i love when um i love when my mouth tingles with with the whiskey and so 
I hate to say it, but we're really looking at kind of like a, this is a tie for me from a palette perspective. And they're just, one's over here, one's over there. Uh, they're both getting the job done. And I don't know exactly which one I like to taste better, but the finish to me is almost always the, that's where it really, you know, that's the end all be all for me. I've, I've done this many times. I've done a countdown, uh, but I've, I also assess the finish between the two. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna double check, but I think I, I, think I know where I'm going here, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Um, do this one more time. so steady Even gold won't turn your tide We flow together like an ocean Every low and every high And I would have you anyway dear. Any way your heart could bear Even if you had to leave me I'd always be waiting Okay, so we have a, um, it finished at two minutes and some change, two minutes, let's say, let's call it at two minutes and uh, three seconds. Um, that's a nice finish. That's a really, really nice finish. Um, but, you know, I, I like finishes to be, you know, that's the kind of finish that can win a competition because it's there and that finish for me is two minutes and something but for someone else it might be five minutes it might be ten minutes um, but the fact is that elegance is there the depth is there but for my palate right now in this moment which it could be different tomorrow but right now it's two minutes and some change and I'm gonna move this over here and just a reminder that uh, I did not press a pause button enough but we actually stopped at around 7:57. So if you um, if you all uh, want to remind me of that when that time comes, if it gets close, Tim Evans asks, "Where's the after show?" The after show is at the singling level of membership. What you do is you click the join button. Uh, you'll see it right there next to subscribe. Click join, uh, become a singling member. And then the, the taste off of the winner against uh, William Larue Weller. And as all the members will tell you, we, it's more than that. We just, we kind of talk, talk whiskey. I mean, that's what we do. And, you know, it's fun. Okay, so here we go to uh, number six. Known a love 
up so steady Even gold won't turn your tide We flow together like an ocean Every low and every high And I would have you any way, dear Any way your heart could bear Even if you had to leave me I'd always be waiting here Even when we are apart I will keep you in my heart And I wouldn't change a thing Even if I were the king And we have our winner, ladies and gentlemen. It is number three. Now, this is a very respectable finish at one minute and uh, 20 seconds. I would actually say that is a long finish. Um, but at the end of the day, the end of the day, number three is your winner tonight. So coming in at second is number six. So I'm going to pour whatever number three is and toast it. I mean, number six, man, you gave a good run. Um, I honestly thought there toward the end you were you were going to win. Uh, but basically what happened was I was so caught up with your flavor. I was so caught up with everything that you were doing to my palate and the unique spices you were bringing to the table. I felt to see like how your finish uh, did not match up to three. So that is why you know i go through this whole process this is why i could not do it in an entire competition i have to limit the the uh the flights because i'm actually you know in competition i spit them and so that's why something like here where you um you know i'm not spitting um i'm actually able to assess it a, a little bit further i think six might have won if this was a competition um, like San Francisco or World Whiskey Awards, uh, you know, that I've judged previously because you're spitting. So because I keep these flights minimal in these blind tastings, I'm, um, yeah. So there we go. So the winner uh, by, the winner by way of finish in almost over a minute is number three. So cheers to number three. Oh, that's some bitching good. Mm. All right, so let's find out what these things are. Oh boy. Okay, so let's start with what was last place. Um, last place. So last place, number two, uh, was Garrison Brothers. Uh, coming in last is Garrison Brothers again. Very nice, very nice. But I did really, really, really like it. But when I tasted it the second time after everything else, um, I got that hint of plastic there, and that kind of pulled me back a little bit. Now, this bottle, there's also the possibility, um, you know, that maybe a little bit of that, like, you know, wax kind of slept off. This bottle's five years old. So, but this is still very much a, a, a approachable, very lovely, very lovely whiskey. At number five, or coming in at, yeah, coming, coming in at number five is number five. And that is uh, TX Bourbon. So Texas Straight Bourbon. At number uh, four is Glass number four, which is Maker's Cast Strength. At number three is number one, Weller Foolproof. Weller Foolproof is the uh, is number one. So what we have here, what we have here, folks, is that this is between Wyoming whiskey, barrel strength, 
and now what we now know is uh, larceny barrel proof. So, tonight's winner of my blind taste off. Well, mm, I, should I ask, answer some questions? You know, well, I see a lot of things coming in here. No, I won't do that to you. Tonight's winner is larceny barrel proof is your winner. Coming in number two was number six in um, Wyoming Whiskey's Cash Strength. That showed really, really well, folks. Lots of fun spices there. If you can find this bottle, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Really, 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 really fun. But your winner tonight, your winner tonight is Larceny Barrel Proof, the latest uh, rendition of it which i tasted uh, a couple weeks ago uh b520 and it was absolutely uh fantastic uh i thought their first release the a120 was awful and so i'm glad to see the larceny barrel proof uh 520 come in strong and uh that was that was quite quite the winner so now what i'm going to do folks i'm going to take a little break and I'm going to pit these two against each other. Uh, this is the 2019 uh, William LaRue Weller Buffalo Trace Antique Collection up against the latest release of Larceny uh, B520. I'm going to do that in the members only channel in the singling membership level. So go check that out over there. We do, we do live stream, uh, weekly live streams like this on the membership side. I also put up a lot of uh, a lot of videos, uh, just random stuff. Like I just put up my very first public appearance uh, from uh, a few years ago, from like 2013. And um, I do. Um, um, uh, I want to start doing some like uh, geeky interviews with distillers. Um, I also take pictures of the stuff I'm sending to celebrities, and you all get to know. You all get to know like what I what's going to be my you know whiskey of the year contender before anybody else uh as well as find out who my celebrities are that i'm interviewing and i have coming up so it's a lot a lot of fun um i really really appreciate you all coming uh coming and joining me tonight um this is this is a i will say it's a shock to me because i remember tasting this and really really liking it but i didn't like it this much folks so as I sign off here, and I hope you do come over on the Members Only channel because we have a great time over there. But as I sign off here, I want to thank you. I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart uh, for joining, for coming and hanging out and uh, you know sharing a dream with me this evening. And again, I miss people. I miss being around folks. Um, and this gives me you know, this gives me something to, to really look forward to are these are these tastings. And so this is this is really fun for me. I really appreciate it. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you came here and spent some time with me. And as I end the night, uh, I do appreciate any kind of like support you can can give me like coming on over to the YouTube side, clicking the like button, clicking the subscribe button because this is this is the momentum for me this is where everything is going and you know i don't know when i'm going to get my live events back i don't know when i'm going to be able to i've i've been in i've been in front of hundreds and thousands of people i don't know when i'm going to be able to speak in front of the smithsonian again i don't know when i'm going to be able to have private dinners in washington dc or new york again and this is this this helps me this helps me um in a lot of ways so if you want to come over to the YouTube side, join the membership channel, it'd mean a lot to me. If you just, you just want to come over and just hang out and subscribe, that'd mean a lot to me as well. But I appreciate you coming here and spending some time with me wherever you are on Twitch, Periscope, Facebook, YouTube. I really do mean it. This is Whiskey is a community, and I have been so honored to be a part of it for as long as I have. And I just want to raise a glass with you all tonight. And um, you know, congratulations to Larceny for for uh, for winning. Because um, as much as I hated your last release, you made up for it with this one. 
This is twice now I've really liked it. So that means it's probably going to be a contender for me. With that said, uh, please, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Don't go licking trash cans. Don't go licking handrails. And it's very important that you remember that vodka sucks unless, unless it's being used for hand sanitizer. That'll do it, everybody. I'll see you over on the members only channel. Cheers.